Look at this code. Would you encapsulate the knowledge of how to properly terminate a defect in the work item repository? Or would you consider this code to be application logic? The clean architecture emphasizes separation of concerns, enhancing both changeability and testability. The use cases layer contains the application logic, which models the business processes of the application. As a general rule of thumb, this layer should contain around 80% of the code of your software and should be the primary focus of your testing efforts. The entities layer contains the domain model of the application or even of the entire enterprise. This layer holds not only data, but also central logic that remains valid and consistent across various business use cases. The framework layer includes all the details like the UI, the database and external services. Finally, the adapter layer serves as the bridge between the application logic and these implementation details. Repositories are often found in the adapters layer. However, this particular repository is part of the frameworks layer due to its direct dependencies to the work item service. Looking at the definition of the repository pattern, it may feel natural to put the terminate defect API into the repository. However, a closer examination reveals that this API contains decision-making logic. And as we prefer such logic to be in the use cases layer, it indicates that this API is probably at the wrong place. Additionally, testing the repository and this decision-making logic is complicated due to its dependencies to the work item service APIs, which gives us a second hint that this API is at the wrong place. You might choose to be pragmatic and leave the code as it is. However, let's explore an alternative design where we move the logic to terminate a work item into the application logic. As the proper termination of work items is probably even a cross-functional logic, let's create a terminate API in the work item class. To make this work, we also need to add these additional properties. We then remove the terminate defect API from the repository and replace it with a generic update API. This raises the question, how do we identify which fields have changed? One approach would be to read the work item from the server again and then use reflection to compute the differences. This is a straightforward solution, but might not be efficient if the update method is called frequently. An alternative approach is to add change tracking capabilities to the work item class. Therefore, we introduce a dictionary which holds all fields of a work item and a small class called field to implement the change tracking. We initialize all fields of a work item using the constructor and implement all mutable properties explicitly to track all changes. Finally, we provide an additional API that allows the repository to query the changed fields. Now the implementation of the update API of the repository becomes straightforward. We fetch the changed fields from the given work item and copy them into the update document. From my perspective, both alternative designs offer clear benefits over the initial design, particularly in terms of separation of concerns and testability. Therefore, I would clearly prefer either of these designs. But it's important to avoid making it a dogma to push all decision-making logic into the use cases or domain layer. Let's have a look at this API. It queries all defects from the work item service matching specific search criteria. Following the same argumentation as the previous example, these filter criteria represent decision-making logic, which should ideally be part of the application logic for better separation of concerns and easier testing. But pulling these filter criteria into the application logic would require to query all defects from the work item service, which would obviously lead to significant performance and memory issues. So for query APIs, we usually prefer to push those filter criteria close to the actual data store and provide specific and optimized APIs for the application logic. Nevertheless, if you still want such filter rules to be part of your application logic, there are again design alternatives available, like for example the specification pattern, which I will cover in another video. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it when it becomes available. By the way, do you believe every project should actually use the repository pattern? Find out the answer by watching this video next.